um, just all right. I, Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Keisuke Mori from NTT Japan. Um, uh, my company uh, pretty much uses pacemaker and PostgreSQL for high availability cluster. And I'm also working with uh, Andrew, uh, who is a key developer of pacemaker for uh, maintenance of a stable version of release 1.0 series. And today's topic is about uh, integration with post, uh, pacemaker and PostgreSQL 9.1. And uh, now the recent version of PostgreSQL uh, PGSQL uh, supports a streaming replication. Uh, as of 9.0, it supports asynchronous mode. And as of 9.1 release, released the last September, uh, supports a synchronous mode, which is uh, very important of, for a uh, high availability cluster. And to uh, using a real production system, we need integration with high availability cluster software such as Pacemaker to, uh, for a fail, automatic failover. So my talk today is uh, for enhancement of the uh, resource agent, which is a uh, glue between the HA cluster and the application uh, script. So, uh, so we have uh, enhancement of the script. So, uh, 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 the, again, what? What we did is, this is a, a already existing active standby configuration. It's pretty simple and typical usage. Uh, there are two physical nodes, both running pacemaker running on them. And on the active node, PostgreSQL database is running. And pacemaker start up the PostgreSQL database through the resource agent script. And when active node failed, pacemaker detects it and start on the standby node. Uh, and the data is on the shared thread, right? So this is a pretty typical active standby configuration. Then now we have a replication feature. Uh, the, in that case, PostgreSQL database runs on both nodes, and on the one node uh, runs as a primary status, and the other node it runs as a hot standby status. That terminology is in a PostgreSQL status. And the data written to the primary data is immediately sent to the hot standby status. And both nodes write its own disk, so there is no longer shared storage. And the PostgreSQL runs two different status. So Pacemaker needs to handle those two different statuses. So we need some additional features for the resource agent script. That's what we did. Okay. So why? Why do we want to do this? The benefit is, the first one is uh, removing all single point of failure. The shared storage is, is sometimes a single point of failure. And second one, this is a really big difference. It's reducing the cost. Shared storage is usually very expensive. So you can build a shared storage much cheaply. And the another benefit is uh, the downtime making it, you can make it downtime shorter. Uh, because uh, when failover happened in uh, active standby configuration, PostgreSQL database uh, have to do a recovery, crash recovery on the standby node. That takes very long time. It's, it's depends, of course, depends on your database size or traffic, but it may up to one minute to three minutes or five minutes. That's the, uh, that's a dominant part of the downtime. So we want to make it short. In the streaming replication, it's already there. It's ready to answer. So it's very fast. And another uh, option is uh, load balancing. The standby, hot standby node can answer to the client. So you can also use a load balancing for read-only query. Uh, this is a simple comparison for, for the other. Uh, the, uh, uh, you may be familiar with the Sloney one, but uh, Sloney one only supports asynchronous, so it's not usable for HA cluster. And uh, PostgreSQL database is, of course, a database. So if you want to use uh, other data than database, then TRBD is a very good solution for that. And another one is performance. It's the PostgreSQL is dedicated, optimized for database, so it's pretty good uh, performance. Uh, the overhead is, should be less than 10%. Yes. OK, so uh, we have enhanced the PostgreSQL resource agent script. The key, point, key difference is the 
And the first, of course, it supports the multi-state handling of the PostgreSQL database. Uh, Pacemaker already supports uh, multi-state resources called master slave. So we, you can use our new resource agent as a master slave resource. And it, this new array also supports a kind of data protection. Uh, suppose there are two nodes. Uh, one node is uh, light, but another node is uh, data is corrupt. But if you run this node, the data is totally corrupt. But, you, but this resource agent try to make um, uh, preventing a start if that data is or, or, or uh, it's all or inconsistent data. And when uh, in, for to make that Pascale scale array, array create a kind of log file, uh, so if you find this file, that node means the data may be out of the data, uh, there is some inconsistency there. So you can make sure uh, what's wrong there. And also, uh, CRM1 is a, a monitor command for pacemaker and uh, this array uh, displays a PostgreSQL status to uh, what, what's running, on, what, what's the status now. Without this, you, you have to look into the PostgreSQL log file or uh, some type of SQL to get to know what's the running status. So the array displays on the CRM command display uh, to make it your operation easier. And another key is that if you run the two nodes at the same time, uh, this array will detect which one is latest one. But uh, as I described better, I don't recommend to use this. I recommend to use the only single node implication for what it that makes your uh, operation more simple. Uh, this is a resource configuration of pacemaker. Uh, usually pacemaker cluster requires a file system resource agent, so uh, IP address resource agent, but in this uh, streaming replication, you only need a virtual IP. Uh, but uh, you have to have a, at least two virtual IP on the primary side. Uh, one is for uh, beep master, is for uh, answering a, a query from the client. And the other one is a beep rep, beep replication, for a, a replication for the PostgreSQL database. And, and the, uh, optionally, you want, if you want to have a load balancing for read-only query, you may want to have uh, another IP address, uh, beep thread, on the standby side. If you don't need it, if you don't need load balancing, you can remove this. The, the sample configuration of a pacemaker to build this is like this. Uh, the first line is creating a m m master thread resources, and uh, uh, the the bold lines are new uh, configuration parameters. And the, uh, the important one is the uh, rep mode, which enables this feature. If you remove this, it works as before, same as before. And you also need to specify the master IP address for here, the, for the replication link IP address here too. And another tricky parameter is stop on the mode. Uh, I will describe what it, mean, it, what it means, but uh, uh, Yes, is recommended. So. And this is a sample of the virtual IPs configuration. There are three. There are three IPs here: uh, beep master, beep replication, beep slave, and some constraints here. Oops. Uh, this is a list of the new uh, par all of the list of the new parameters in the new array, but. But, but you don't have to specify everything. And also, of course, you have to configure the PostgreSQL database itself to support a, a streaming replication. Uh, this is only a, a part of the configuration that's related to the replication, but uh, uh, details are for see the PostgreSQL manual, it's already in there. But one thing uh, you have to add is uh, this include line. Uh, the resource agent create this file to control a PostgreSQL status. So you need to add this uh, line. Okay, and you launch the pacemaker, and it's a running status, actual running status as a replication. 
and look at the master slave display. So in this case, uh, master is running on the node one and slave is running on node two. And virtual IP is running on, uh, uh, master and replication is running on node one. Read only VIP slave is running on node two. And also you may see a new, some attributes here. Um, the PGA scale status means a current running status of database. And also it displays a PGA scale data status. That means what's the status of the data? Data is latest or old? Here is the list of the status, but you, uh, probably you, only, you will only see only, only part of them. Part of them. Um, stop is well, obvious, and primary is obvious. And in a hot standby status, you may see a HS alone or HS sync. In the hot standby status, there are several different status in the PostgreSQL, but uh, then you will see a HS alone, which means uh, the database is running on there, but not connected to the, the master site, so it's not static re replication. And the HS sync means it's replicating and the data is already synced. So it's a replication is uh, working completely. That's running status. And the data status means um, the disconnected means uh, latest one is uh, uh, correct to this correct status. It's running as a primary and the data is up to date. Th this is a correct data. But the other node may be uh, disconnected means that node was once stopped so and the uh, uh, master node is already running. So the failed node, is, uh, the data is already, mm, it's, uh, it's uh, too old, so it's not usable. So it, that node should not be a primary until the, you make it related. And, and when the master slave is running, it's streaming, but during the replication, it's not may, it may not be up to date, so it's not ready to fail over. In that sense, in that state, it may streaming async. So it's a streaming is working right, but not up to date. And also, streaming sync is it's replicating and the data is synced. So in that case, it's ready to fail over. It, anytime the fail occurs, the, the secondary node works as a primary. And, okay, then there's a, uh, the, how do you operate this? Uh, the, I would recommend this process. There are many uh, choices or options, but I would recommend this one is very simple one. Um, so generally, I would recommend to run a pacemaker, start one by one. Uh, many users run the um, start, run pacemaker on both nodes at the same time. But in this case, uh, in this replication case, I don't think it's, uh, uh, I think it's very uh, complicated. So you should start at the primary first, and then you should uh, invoke a secondary node later. And when you, before you start in the secondary, second node, uh, you should always copy the data from the primary node to the hot standby node. Uh, to make sure that data is always correct. Because it's easily, uh, there is a consist inconsistency. So you should always, always make sure that this data is correct. So the, here is an uh, actual step-by-step -step based uh, procedure. And first you will initialize the database and suppose the node wise should be as a first primary database. Then invoke the pacemaker and the resource agent on the node one. and it, the node will get to the primary status of the database. And then you will copy the database from uh, node one to node two. Uh, you can use any backup command of PostgreSQL, like a base backup. This is should be a most simple one. PG base, ba base backup command will copy all the database from primary to uh, secondary, uh, primary to hot standby. But you may want to use a rsync or whatever. And then they invoke the pacemaker on the hot standby second node. Then the hot standby node will try to connect to the primary set, primary node. And then uh, when finish the replication, 
the status will go into the HS sync. That, that is already completed. So in that case, the both nodes are running correctly. And any time primary node failed, then second uh, hot standby node can promote it to the primary, so continue, it can continue the service. And suppose, in that case, suppose the node one failed. In that case, node two is now primary. That, that's expected. And so how do you recover the failed node? That, there's a stop, step for this. And first, you should stop the pacemaker on the failed node first and repair things, repair something wrong. And then, then invoke the pacemaker, but before uh, invoke pacemaker, the node one is now going to the hot standby node, right? Then, then you should copy from the node two, which is the primary, to the node one, which is the hot standby. So the copy database, and then uh, in that case, the log file should be in the node one. That means node one failed, and the RA uh, intentionally leave that log file on the node one to prevent the node one starting alone. So you copy the from the primary, so you make sure that the data is correct. Then you remove the log file. Then pacemaker invoked, the pacemaker will start the uh, PostgreSQL on the node one too. Then it should be for fine. And then the node one is going to the HS6 status and it is going to find the node two failed, then node two will be primary again. Yep. Uh, uh, yes, that is how to use that. And from here, it's a more implementation of details. Um, but probably I should talk to the Andrew personally better. So, uh, but problem is, uh, the state transition is different between pacemaker and PostgreSQL. So there are some difference between the status. So the demo also parameters change the behavior, but I would recommend yes. So well, I would skip to this, but skip up the details here. Okay, so last one is, the, what's the status of the resource agent is uh, we want to merge this resource agent for upstream uh, official package of resource agent. So anybody who interested in this feature, please try and uh, give a comment. The development is code is available on the GitHub, and uh, the developer is Mr. Takatoshi Matsuo, who is uh, uh, my colleague sitting next to me. He will answer your question or a comment. And document and sample I, I described above is also there. And please uh, try and give us a comment. Uh, that's all for, from me today. Please thank Morrison. Um, does, um, we're theoretically in break time, but um, that's what. Um, uh, take some questions if you. Anybody has any? Oh, silence. Here's a question. If you've got a hot standby and you said the master files, oh sorry, yes, the master files, the hot standby becomes the master, the, the master goes back to a, um, a slave or, or not, it just, or it just stops? It just stops. Just stops just on that, stops. okay, cool. I'm wondering what uh, like performance uh -huh. uh, uh, analysis you've done and what sort of the performance impact is versus. Uh, uh, in my slide, it's just use a PG bench, simply PG bench yeah. with a read on write. Yeah. yeah. I doing like a, yeah. Typically, I see like with a two phase or synchronous thing, you get a pretty big impact dependent on network latency. So it's just interesting how it works. And it works. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't have the details right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. One at the back.
Uh, in that scenario where you just described the, the so no, the, when the master stops and, and um, the slave gets upgraded, um, what happens if the master, if you bring it back online, does it automatically try and assume master status again or does that, how do you configure that or, or how does that side of things work? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, could you say that again, please? So, so if your master crashes uh -huh. and you, um, a, a slave gets um, um, upgraded to master status, if you get your master back online again, does it automatically assume master status and the, the slave that got upgraded, does it then go back to being a, um, a slave? Uh, I know it's not, it's not, not, no. not automatic, it should be done manually. Uh, I was wondering how your software determines that uh, the data in um, one, one of the two is too corrupt or is unable to uh, be used or depended upon uh, so that it, it's, you say that it, Postgres won't start on if the, um, if the status is uh, um, bad. I was just wondering how your software determines that the status is, is insufficiently good. Uh, uh, in our RS logic, uh, if there is a one master node and the other node is down, then other node should be a uh, rate replicated, so it's, it's already invalidate the data. Sorry, I didn't quite catch. Uh, uh, I didn't understand, I'm sorry, I, uh, my hearing's not so sorry, good. Sorry, I'm bad in my English is bad, so... Uh, uh, could, could you take my person? Uh, it's better for me to understand your question too. So, please talk to him one by one. Personally? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll give you the last one. Well, a simple question. Hmm? What happens after a power fire? Power fire? Yeah, both nodes are good at the same time. What happens? Oh. <laughs> mm. Then you should have another solution like a disaster recovery solution like this. Yeah, if you uh, there is the same rack, then we cannot save that. Can they discover that they both untalked each other again, or does it require agreement? If both nodes reboot, mm -hmm. can it automatically come back alive? Uh, not automatically. You should always make sure by manually. Okay, um, okay let's um, stop it there. Please thank Maurice again.